Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. I think it's time to do a Hunter run. And starting off with a nice rare. This is a tough call. So I know a lot of people are a really, really big fan of Savannah High Main because it's just an excellent end game card. Very difficult to deal with. And it's a beast. It's a good beast. But I am actually tempted by the Kodo here because it is a beast. It's cheaper. It's still got a pretty big body. Same amount of health as the High Main. And it's also removal. I know some people are going to think I'm crazy for passing on a Savannah high main, but the thing is, I've just don't had enough drafts where, like, you know, you get these high mains and it doesn't matter because by the time you play them, your opponent's just going to kill you. So I'm going to take the Kodo here. I'm going to trust my instincts. If they're wrong, then they're wrong. But uh, at that, that's just what I felt calling out to me. I think the cheaper cheapness combined with the removal, combined with it still being a good beast, made it a justifiable call. We'll see. Let's grab the Storm of Night there. It's the only card that's any good. And, okay, I'll take an Explosive Trap because one of those is nice. Hannibal Companion is just super good. Yeah, it's nice to have an owl because it's a beast, and silence is nice to get damage through, but I'm not going to pass on an animal companion. Alright, now Snipe I think is pretty much junk. I don't want to take a Timberwolf because if I don't get any Buzzards or Hounds, which is totally possible, that Timberwolf is just going to be pure garbage. So much as I hate to do so, I'm going to take the Grunt here for some early time. Now the Hunter's Mark is a really good card I'm finding, especially if you get Unleash the Hounds. But if you don't get Unleash the Hounds, it's a little bit weak. So I'm not going to gamble, I'm just going to take a really, really good 2-drop. If the other two cards here were junk though, then I would in fact have taken the um, Hunter's Mark. Okay, I think the Gorbachev Berserker is trash, so I'm going to take River Crocolisk, although I'm not that excited about it. Here I will take a Tundra Rhino, because it's a very good beast, it's very difficult to kill, and uh, it's just ridiculous if your opponent doesn't kill it in time, they'll just lose. Grab the Chillwind Yeti here for some nice mid-game. This is looking pretty good. The Cobra is the best of these cards, and it's also a beast. So we're getting lots of good beasts. We just need some beast synergy. Arcane Shot is an easy grab there. And okay, I can take another good beast, another good 3-drop. I've already got two beastly 3-drops. A third wouldn't be bad, especially if it charges with the Tundra Rhino. It's really good. But Freezing Trap I'm going to take. There have just been too many times in my life where I desperately wanted a Freezing Trap and didn't have one. Here we're taking a 6-drop. So the Archmage is more durable. And it has one more total stat point. The Frost Elemental, though, has a power that's immediately beneficial. So I'm going to take the Frost Elemental, although if I end up getting things like Explosive Shot or Multi-Shot, I might regret not having the Archmage. Okay, we could take a bad buff or another Yeti. We'll just take another Yeti there. The Raid Leader's not usually worth it. And okay, we can have the option now for a third Yeti, which is just unconditionally good. But I'm going to take Houndmaster. There's a decent number of beasts here. I mean, we got the Crocolisk, the Companion, the Cobra... The Kodo, the Rhino. There's actually a fair amount of beasts, and I might even get more. We're only halfway done with the draft. Okay, I can take a second Freezing Trap here. The Hyena, even with me having other beasts, seems a bit weak. It's mostly just a 2-2 two, two for 2. Or if you're about to trade a beast in for another minion, it's a 4-3 for 2, which is good. But still pretty easy to kill as a 4-3. I'm going to take the Storm Suck Commando, believe it or not. The damage, I find, is sometimes useful. And uh, I think you'll feel like it was better than taking another Freezing Trap. So Dark Iron Dwarf is probably the best card here, but I'm going to fill my curve in a little bit and take a Scarlet Crusader. It's one of the strongest three drops. Here, I'll resist the urge to take a Panther again and take no much Inventor because I currently have zero card draw. And I hate to pass on Deadly Shot, but I think actually Unleash the Hounds is a more important card than Deadly Shot. We'll see if I rue that day. Yuck. Only the Crazed Alchemist is playable there. Oh, jeez. That's freaking... Okay. Guess we're taking a Crocolisk again. And an Acolyte for some more card draw, perhaps. So here, I still don't want the spell damage, don't want another 6 drop. My curve is already kind of too high for my liking, so I'm going to take a Fen Creeper to at least provide some taunts. Arcane Shot is lovely. And okay, so I have the option to take Cult Master or Unleash the Hounds. I'm going to take a chance here, and I'm going to take the Cult Master. I don't have any Buzzards, so and I don't have any Timberwolves, because I passed on those. So Unleash, And I don't have any Hunter's Mark, so Unleash the Hounds is just a good, solid card, but it doesn't have any particular synergy in this deck. We will take the Cult Master here to get some card draw potential. Well, alright, I'm not going to pass Unleash the Hounds there. I'm not going to pass an Ascension there. I'm taking something expensive here. Might as well take a second Tundra Rhino for some redundancy. A nice two-mana cycle seems good. And we're going to end... Ooh. Well, the Arcane Golem gives the deck some extra reach, but I'll take a Knife Juggler because that goes well with Unleash the Hounds to give the Unleash the Hounds at least some kind of synergy. So what do I think of this deck? Well, it's missing Buzzard and it's missing Hunter's Mark, and it's missing Iron Beak Owl, so it might have some trouble getting through taunts to finish things off. In particular, let's say if we're up against a warrior or a priest such that our hero ability is nullified, 
then, you know, the opponent also has some taunts. We could have some trouble closing out games. The curve is also a little bit higher than I would like. That said, though, there's plenty of two drops, so I should have, you know, only maybe one game that's, like, agonizingly slow to start, like this one, maybe. Uh, but for the most part, I should have things to play early on. I should not be steady shotting on turn two all that often. Certainly I'm not on turn three. So I'm going to kick the cat out of my room, get out of here, too, and get on with it. All right, wow, this is pretty great. There are no one drops in this deck, so I will never be playing anything on turn one unless I am second with the coin and have two two drops in the hand. However, uh, this is about as good as I can hope for. A generic card, a really good three drop, and then a really good four drop. It's pretty perfect. All right. So we respond to Lapernon with Crocolisk, which is a great response. Now the mage has to use her hero ability if she wants this Crocolisk to die or a spell. She could also drop a buff of some kind like a Direwolf Alpha, but... Uh, that's generally going to be unlikely. All right, so there we eat up a frost bolt with the two men minion. It's pretty great use of, of, of the crocolisk. We'll play the Scarlet Crusader here. So again, I'm just baiting her into trading this Leper Gnome and Fire Blast for the Crusader, so that then she falls behind. She is going to drop the Questing Adventure. Does she have a coin for Arcane Missiles? She's going to go for Arcane Missiles here, isn't she? Try to kill off the Scarlet Crusader, and she has a 50/50 chance of accomplishing this. So this is a really big coin flip. Oh God. Oh geez. Well. So, just like that, I am in dire shape. I had a really good start, but the opponent actually had a better one. She had Frostbolt to kill one of my drops, a Questing Adventure Coin Arcane Missiles to kill the Scarlet Crusader. I am pretty just boned here. She's just gonna go straight for my face, and now she's got this 5-5 that I pretty much have no way of killing. Well, that was kind of a ridiculous game, to be totally honest. Uh, there's just not much I can do. I have to play this engine, which is pretty gross, but I, yeah, I just have to play that engine, because otherwise, if this questing adventure hits me, she's just going to fireball me, and I'm going to die. So this was kind of retarded. Um, sorry for anyone who's offended by that word, but that's pretty much the most accurate word I can think of. This was pretty much a retarded game. There was absolutely nothing I could do. I don't think there was anything I could have drafted differently. There was nothing I could have played differently. I was just going to lose this game. That's all that there is to it. Wow. Uh, kind of a crappy start to the arena, but on the other hand, uh, you know, these things happen. And I'm sure that High Dare the Mage has lost her share of games to utter retardation, such as the one that she delivered unto me in this game. So, getting off to a pretty bad start, but that does mean we'll be in the loser's bracket, so our odds of winning should be higher. And I still think the deck is fine. There's some concerns, but still is not like an 0-3 or like a 3-3 kind of deck. I'd be very upset if it were a 3-3 deck. Alright, she copies her questing adventure. Uh, throws it away at my 4-5 taunter. Gets this guy up to 8-5 so that the Houndmaster cannot kill it. Throws the Leper Gnome at it so that, uh, she, so I'm taking the damage. And she's actually playing quite cautiously here. So this is unfortunate because the Freezing Trap is just going to eat this Mana Worm. And I cannot kill this Mana Worm because, uh, the Rhino only has, uh, 2 damage. And these other cards are not beasts. So this sucks, but I have to play the Grunt... The Rhino. I'd run into the Mana Worm, I guess. But the problem is, if she can just play any spell, or really just Mana Worm plus Fire Blast, this guy's gonna hit me for eight damage, and then I lose. All right, so Flame Strike is another way to win. We're gonna go ahead and concede because that is lethal. So that was just immensely idiotic. She says, "Well played," to be polite, I suppose. But really, there was nothing well played about that game. I had a perfectly fine curve. She just had ridiculous nonsense. If I had been the second player, actually, I probably would have had a better chance because she would not have been able to coin out the arcane missiles. What would have happened was she would have played. She would have had to risk playing the questing adventure on turn three and having it die, which I bet she wouldn't have done. So most likely, you know, she would have had what, like the turn one leper gnome. I pass. She attacks, has nothing to do on turn two. She just pings my face. On my turn two, I play the Crocolisk. Then she Frostbolts it on turn three. Do you see how this ends up being totally different? So then I play the Scarlet Crusader. On turn four, I guess she could have Questing Adventure, Arcane Missile. Yeah, it would have been still pretty bad. I don't know. I'm trying to replay that game of, you know, knowing what all the cards were. Trying to figure out if I would have had any better chances. Maybe she would have still done the same thing just on turn four instead of turn three. Hard to say. But with Frostbolt and with Arcane Missiles and getting the 50-50 coin flip on the Arcane Missiles, might I remind you, I just had no chance. I right, up against J Blaze the Shaman, and this is actually a really unfortunate start. This is um, kind of improbable that I would have in so many cards and nothing at all on turn two. 
He's going to get to play a totem on turn two, so it's a good thing at least he has a slow start, but his slow start is vastly superior to my slow start. I'm actually going to take a risk here. I'm going to just coin out this Cobra. There are so many goddamn two drops and three drops in this deck that I really feel my odds are pretty good of, of getting one. And I have to take that chance, otherwise he's going to just get too far ahead. It sucks playing a Cobra this early because a lot of three drops, you know, using the Cobra against him is kind of overkill. Does he have a Rock Fighter weapon or Lightning Bolt? No, he does not, so I actually get a little bit lucky. Finally, my opponent does not have the removal that he needs. He had one mana left over, so he could have definitely, you know, killed the Cobra if he had a Rock Fighter weapon. And we get to kill the Berserker because the Cobra is a very good answer to the Berserker. Alright, so there's the Mad Bomber threatening to kill my team. Is it going to work? Well, he hits the Cobra, which is the one thing that he needed to hit, so story of my life, I guess, continues. We do have really good cards, but the problem is, if you'll observe, I'm only playing one card at a time. This is actually just horrendous. I don't know if my dex curve is actually off this much. I really don't think my... I think I'm just getting a disproportionately large number of my high-costing minions. I feel like this is a terrible hand here. <sighs> Luckily, you know, a few of these come down and kill something, but um, still, it's, it's pretty lame. But I can only play one card at a time here for pretty much the next good long while, and he's getting a nice bevy of, of totems going. So my only master removal is Unleash the Hounds, which isn't even that good here. Crazed Alchemist, that'll be nice to get a free kill on a totem at some point, but we're going to drop the Rhino. Let's kill the totem with that also. And this raises a pretty significant threat. Like, if he doesn't kill this, then Kodo drops down, kills the totem, and charges at the Mad Bomber. So he really does need to kill this if he possibly can. Makes another totem. Is he going to get a Rock Biter weapon or a Lightning Bolt to help the Mad Bomber finish this off? It looks like, well, he could still do it with one mana. No, he doesn't have it. Okay, so he didn't get the kill for this Rhino. Alright, so what we're going to do is the following, then. I'm going to... Think. The Kodo charges. Doesn't use up my mana very efficiently, though. To use up my mana efficiently, I could play the Crazed Alchemist and the Yeti, and then nothing charges. The Crazed Alchemist, by killing a totem, achieves pretty much the same effect as the Kodo does. But the Kodo kills two things. It kills something when coming down, and then it also kills something when it charges and attacks. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Kodo. Get that going. Hopefully it kills the Voodoo Doctor, and it does. That's awesome. We're going to also kill the Mad Bomber, the hardest-hitting creature, and the Spell Damage Totem, which is the most dangerous totem. I damaged the Kodo because it's less valuable to me than the Rhino is. My opponent, of course, doesn't know that I have no other beast in my hand apart from the Rhino, but... Even so, um, he's got to figure that's a pretty big threat, so he's going to have to try to go out of his way to kill it. He couldn't kill it last turn, so he might not be able to kill it at all. He will get the kill on the Kodo at the very least. Yep, so the Kodo dies. And what else is he going to do? Raging Morgan. Well, all things considered, that was pretty under underwhelming because he didn't really achieve the goal of killing the Rhino. Now, the issue is that uh, the Worgen can run into the Rhino and uh, do bad things. So, what do we do here? Well, one option is I can play the Knife Juggler and then a couple of minions and hope that one knife actually finishes off this Worgen, but if it doesn't, it's it's not going to be in pretty good shape for me. The Crazed Alchemist doesn't really help me kill the Worgen at all, unless, of course, I swap the Rhino's stats and then have the Rhino just die at the Worgen. I could also just Frost Elemental Freeze the Worgen. Well, let's do that. So we're going to freeze this Worgen. I will kill this Shattered Sun Cleric. And now what's happening is that if he silences this, I'm okay with it, because while that will allow it to kill the Rhino, that will also kill the Enraged Wind Fury ability. So I'm okay with him silencing it and attacking with it. I've got a bigger board than he does. He is kind of finally get to kill my Rhino, but that's going to be most of his turn. I can take care of business with what I have here. He does not get the Taunt Totem, which he so desperately wanted, so this is looking pretty good. Alright. So I don't have any beasts, so the Rhino is not maybe that good, apart from like being an overpriced Stormwind Knight. Ah, uh, do I play the Knife Juggler? That's the question. I think this is the time for the Knife Juggler. So we'll Knife Juggle it up. Play the Crazed Alchemist. Kill off this totem. I could also Crazed Alchemist on the Argent Commander and then kill the Argent Commander with my Frost Elemental. But the thing is, that the Frost Elemental is killing that Raging Worgen. So we'll do this. Actually, wait. Before I do that, then, let me just actually kill the Raging Worgen so that if a knife hits it, it doesn't get... Enraged and deal an extra damage to the Frost Elemental for no reason. We fling a knife. We have a 1 in 3 chance now of killing that. We do, in fact, kill it. And I'll just play Chillman Yeti here. Hopefully we don't get run into any mind control attacks. Mind control attack has been hitting me a fair amount in the last few weeks. People do seem to like playing with that card. 
And they always steal my best creature. He's gonna silence up my knife juggler, so it's not gonna fling any more knives. That's fine, though. It's still a 3-2, and it's still gonna kill a spellbreaker, and it still did a job. It killed off one of his totems, which is pretty good. Alright, so now this gets buffed, so the knife juggler no longer kills it, but that's fine, because the yeti still does. The crazed alchemist, or sorry, the crazed alchemist can kill the shattered some cleric. So I'm just building up a steady advantage here over time. Okay, we're gonna play the rhino then. Use the rhino to kill the totem. Use the yeti to kill the spellbreaker. Use the alchemist to kill the shattered some cleric. And we're going to play Senjin to protect our rhino here, who is very precious. So all the beasts are still in my deck. I got the crocolisks in here. I got animal companion in there. I've already used the kodo, but. Uh, Still, I've got a fair amount of beasts that I can still whip out. My opponent keeps on playing nothing but junk, so he seems like he tried to play, like, draft an aggressive deck and just failed. Because this is way too much junk. I mean, he should be playing fire elementals and stuff by this point. Alright, can I get a beast? I cannot. I can get arcane shot, which actually is not that helpful. Alright, well, let's just do some pretty straightforward trades then. We'll do this to kill that. We'll do this to kill that. Go ahead and pop this thing. Let's drop my stuff. Am I concerned about Lightning Storm? Not really, because this thing survives. This thing has a 50-50 shot. This thing draws me a card and this thing survives. So I'm okay with Lightning Storm if, it, if, it's, if he has it. And he's only got two cards anyway. So this is just a game we're winning on card advantage, although it is still possible that he would draw a bunch of cards off of something and come back and win this. Stormpike Commando finishes off my Senjin. Now that allows these Crusader to get a free kill on either the Acolyte or the Berserker depending on what she thinks is the bigger threat. She actually thinks it's the Rhino. Does she have something to finish it off with? No. All right, so that's the game. Thanks so much for watching this video, folks. If you enjoyed it, do please like, my, like the video and or subscribe to my channel. I will be back shortly with the rest of the games in this run. See you soon.